Hi there, this is Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags, your premier online provider of multi-layered worship flags. I'm just going to see if who's going to come on and make sure that you can hear me. Um, but I know a lot of you are going to be watching this later and that's 100% okay. In fact, um, it's expected since I do do these during the day and uh, uh, the majority of people cannot, employers don't really like it if that's what you are taking your time to do. But I did want to talk to you uh, a little bit today about worshiping, using worship flags in a small space. The, um, sorry, I'm getting some messages. Um, so if you can hear me, just give me a thumbs up uh, or a heart or something that I know that you can hear me or send a, a message. Uh, as I move back, I won't be able to see the messages, but I think I can still see the thumbs up. Um, I'm just going to assume that you can hear me and I'm going to keep talking about flagging in small spaces. So the, the reality is, if you go to a church that does allow worship flags, which is awesome and you're fortunate and you're more, and you're not say more blessed, but you are very blessed because that's probably not the experience that most of us have. Um, if you actually have a church that does allow, now the churches as they built them years ago didn't allow t space for fl worship flags. So particularly if you go to a church that has uh, pews uh, set up that they are not movable, well, that causes a big problem. Now, I know some churches actually who have decided we really love the worship arts and that we really want to have that incorporate that. So they actually have removed some of the pews, which is great because we know that they're making they're making room for what the Lord is doing. We know this is worship flaggers, flagging worshipers that we know that God is actually uh, got his hand on the worship arts and uh, there's a worship renaissance taking place. So churches are going to be start, we're going to start seeing that we actually do see if churches have been built like maybe in the last 25 years that they the sanctuaries are more multi-functional spaces where the chairs have to be set up and reconfigured which is great so that again that gives a lot of freedom so if there's the space but then you get into a church that like Bethel who actually has a sanctuary that can be completely uh, redesigned however they want but then there's just a lot of people so you have to be worried about the people so we have chairs pews that inter interrupt our ability to flag and then we have a lot of people and we don't want to tell the people to go away but this is the reality that we actually have regardless even if you have a lot of space in your church you might just have too many people that that's not okay now I when I was going to a church that did allow them, and currently not going to a church that allows worship flags but when I was they had decided yes we really love worship flags and we want to allow some space for them and we they had a whole side section which was really great but the I'm going to de demonstrate in a moment the reality is worship flags are big so even in that really big space we were still only able to have like maybe three or four flaggers we didn't have a team so it was anybody could worship flag so in again I want to jump back a little bit if your church allows worship flags and allows anyone to use them that means there's probably a lot of freedom in that church and people demonstrate and use the freedom in a lot of different ways which means in my experience children are often running around so you have to be very cognizant of where the children are in your space even if you can worship in your church now in my church when we were on the side there is, I call it the spiritual vortex, when it, in the surrounding area where the worship flags are being used, there is a lot of spiritual activity that is happening. And whether people are aware of it or not, it is a very enjoyable presence to be around. So what we were noticing is that although the leadership team gave us space to use the worship flags, People would come and stand at the wall and just they wanted to worship in that space. Now, that's fantastic because we know, spiritually speaking, that something is happening here. But that also impeded our ability to actually let loose. 
So I am outside because my fa my house is actually too small to flag. I can't, it, the ceiling, I think it was made for midgets. So it's really, really low ceilings. And I, I have never let loose with my flags inside. So I do flag outside. So number one, I'm going to say that if you have a space that's too small to flag in church, then you can actually take your flags outside of the church and flag outside where you have lots of space. So first off, I wanted to say that you do not actually need to f worship in the church. You are allowed to worship everywhere and I encourage you to worship everywhere. Hey Nancy. And that I encourage you to go outside, explore the na God's nature that causes you to worship, and worship outside. So you're not confined to the church. But if your church is too small, so I'm going to demonstrate, now someone was saying, how much space do they need? Well, I'm going to step back. I am 5'8", so I have a span of about 5'8 on my hands. Now if you add worship flags to that, that is, there's the, these poles are three feet each. So now you, I'm actually even too wide for for the portrait, Atlant, uh, the video. So you can't even see the edge unless I step back very far. But you can't even see. So if I were just to do this and not move, I would need uh, six, five feet three feet, 11 feet, just for me. Now, I'm a, I take big swooping steps, so I need quite a lot of, lot of space. And the majority I see you move, you do that as well. So, we have to be cognizant of other people, okay? So your freedom to use worship flags, or if your church gives you the freedom to use worship flags, your freedom to use them should not impede another person's or ability to worship in that same space. So as a flagging minister, as a flag worship, as a worshiper who knows my place and my authority as in worship to lead, whether I'm recognized or not, I talked about this in a different video, uh, about the, the place that you are, have, that God gives you the cl claims for your feet where you go, you actually don't need to worship with flags in the church. You can actually go to church, worship, participate fully, and not use your flag. So if it is impeding another person, I strongly, 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 see, put down your flags and give the other person the opportunity to worship and express so that would be my number two. First one, go outside. Number two, if it's causing another person's, if it's infringing on their freedom and their ability to worship, then put your flags down. So I, the other, okay, so in, uh, I was teaching a, I have a flag team, a middle school flag team. So we didn't have a lot of space. So we had maybe, I'd say eight feet back, uh, front to back. And then we had space uh, side to side, which was great in the front. But the, the back to back. So I'm also very sweep, sweeping. So I go around and I use, not only do I need side to side 11 feet, but I need at least six feet behind me and six feet in front of me so that I don't have to worry about that. So some of the moves that we can that we can use, you can actually stay still. I do find that a little bit difficult and it's hard for me personally to get into the worship because part of the strength and the authority and the position as a leader, uh, as a worship leader, I actually need to move. I, I need to enter into movement. I enter, have to enter into the, fully into the worship. If I am cognizant or my eyes open around and looking for the children, it actually stops me from, from entering into the worship into fully of who I am and what I'm expressing. So, so sometimes I just don't worship because of that reason too, right? We're, we're letting the little children go. And that's great. Let them play at the feet of Jesus so that they will understand at some point that, hey, there's actually some rhythm to what we do here in worship. That comes down the road. So let the little children play. 
but if you do and you want to use your flag so some of the things with the flag team because they couldn't go behind and we actually did have some problems with unplugging the synthesis the keyboards and and get messing up with the with the cords we had to keep all of our movements in front so so one of the ways to deal with a small space is to step back so that you are almost as far back as you possibly can. That way you can control the environment in front of you. So you can do your figure eights and you can do your declarations and you can go around, but just keep them in front of you. So that is, if you're dealing with a space, so that's with wooden, with wooden dowels, which if you get hit, yeah, they hurt. You don't want to do that. So one of the ways that you can, so you just have to watch your movements. Uh, people come first, unless you're giving a, given a space or there's an, uh, uh, a space like at Bethel Church. Not many of the, us churches, the churches have that, and that is such a blessing. But wait for it, it's gonna be coming. Churches are gonna be opening up their worship. They're gonna be putting more emphasis and a, and a desire to pull that in. So they're gonna create the space. But until this happens, we have to honor what is going on and slowly introduce it. So these are with the flag. So often, if I know I'm going into a small space, now Catch the Fire Worship Flags has just introduced quiver poles. Now, I, and I'm demonstrating with these. So these are way softer. So if they do, if, if uh, they get caught on someone's head or, or tap on someone's shoulder, it's okay. It doesn't hurt uh, like a wooden pole. So that's an option. You can, these have a lot of give. They're flexible. They don't hurt. They're not going to whack you. But We've demonstrated this before. Here's another option. Now watch for these in the next collection. So we've got the Amazing Grace collection that's available still to the end of the month. And then the next collection, we will be introducing swing flags in our lineup. Now swing flags, the thing that makes them swing, swing is actually they're weighted, but they're weighted with a very light uh, weight. So worst case if you get hit with them you can see I'm hitting myself it's not hurt it doesn't hurt it won't hurt it won't whack someone else again the, tr the trick is not to whack someone else but if by chance that happens and as you know that that is a possibility so these don't require as much space right they don't I only need my arm span and maybe another two feet on either side. So way less space. You can move things around and, and these go, and you typically want to use these in front anyway, especially as you're getting started. Uh, Caleb Brundage is really amazing with these. But that's, that is one option. So to just to ch change up or try different flags, add different things to your flag bag. The thing that I bring the most, and you've seen me this with these quite a bit, is just the silks. Now, these have nothing in them. They are just silk. And so you can turn around where you are. You can go up and down. You don't need a lot of space. And if you are in someone's space, or they get in your space, this is not going to damage them in any way. In fact, they might just get a brush of the presence when it goes over them. So that is, hello. So now I can actually see close enough to see you guys. I couldn't see. If you have any questions, throw them up right now. I'm going to be ending this and then I'm going to go inside my house. And if you are a fire catcher, in the group, uh, you know that I was doing a giveaway for a free flag. Uh, we'll be doing the count inside, so give me about 15 minutes to get that set up. So I'm going to be heading inside, ending this, heading inside. Sorry about that, I thought I just got a phone call. Um, I'll be going inside, so if you're not a fire catcher yet, better get in the group. Look at, watch that video, and then you can also enter before I get, before I start the live one. So are there any questions 
know if I can see this. Okay, so if you do, if you're watching this later, I'm going to be checking comments. I'm going to be uh, adding in things that if I've forgotten, I hope I haven't. But if I have, I just wanted to talk about this because we actually, that's the reality is that we all have small spaces. So if you have any questions or you want to make comments, please do so. I know a lot of you are going to be watching later uh, when you as you have time. So that's great. How do you handle being in the church that does not allow flags? I struggle with this. Oh, Terry. <laughs> a lot of us struggle with that. <coughs> so that is a really big, that's a very, very big question. And I... I'm going to be addressing that one because we've all experienced rejection. The, my short answer right now is you put them down. You put them down and uh, go outside. You don't have to get permission to worship with flags outside. So we are, we are flagging worshipers. Our worship doesn't depend on whether we can use flags or not. So it does, it hurts. It hurts when you've been rejected. If they've actually out and out said, no, you can't flag. And I have my own story, which I'll be sharing at another time about that. It is, um, it's probably the biggest hurt that any of us have. Uh, but as the Lord is bringing uh, a, the worship renaissance, he's going to be opening that up. It's, he really is going to be opening that up. And we have to allow the time, the space, and be able to actually properly give the proper answer. Because I do believe that a lot of the hesitation is the misuse in the past. That here I am, I'm a flagging worshiper, and you all have to get out of my way as opposed to deferring to others in their, in their form of worship. So some of the, the attitudes of entitlement have, have contributed to that. To, the, to just shutting it all down. And a lot of it, too, I've been noticing that the worship flags are coming into the even the evangelical churches or the mainstream churches. Hey, Shelly. They're coming into the mainstream churches. And so if it takes a lot of teaching, getting them comfortable, having an answer. And so some of that we really definitely, I really want to talk to you in the weeks and months to come in regards to how to respond to these kind of things. Because as a Bible teacher, in the um, that's where I started from. And I, I understand the need to actually understand it, that it is actually in the Bible, how we can have an answer, how, how we can have a soft answer, and how we can actually to defer to the leadership. That if they're having, there's a time to, to let it go, and then there's a time to push it. So we're going to... So, uh, Jake Mona, you need to go to the fire catchers group. There's going to be a link in and around the page, and then you can watch that video. So we're going to, um, Terry, coming back to your question, we're going to have, have that talk. So we, we defer and we set it down. We can push it at some times, but we have to really follow the Holy Spirit. So great question. That is probably the question that I, I want to discuss because that, that happens to us all. So that's it. I'll meet you inside in about 15 minutes. <laughs>